because it's every other word or sentence and paragraph is blacked out. So what are you really trying to figure? You can t- interpret it in so many different ways. Right. And, you know, with today's technology getting better and better, I'm waiting for the day when they come out with something that can say, hey, you know what? We can see what's behind that blacked out stuff. I know that day is coming one of these times. I know. It- you know, what gets me about Area 51, think about this. You know, they even uh, back, I think, was it 2014 or 16, uh, the, uh, denied, you know, that Roswell crash. It was nothing more than a, you know, balloon, and they had the pieces to prove it. Yeah, sure, uh-huh. I can't believe that. How could a weather balloon that's made out of mylar, or back then probably a rubberized canvas, take out trees and go skidding for that long distance doesn't make any sense. Well, here's the other thing to go with that. How absurd would it be for a seasoned major to mistake a weather balloon when he's from that base for a craft? That's absurd pill to swallow right there. Well, they sure announced it as a UFO, and the next morning they sure quickly changed it. Now, come on. A weather balloon? (laughs) And, and, you know, but, you know, a lot of people said, well, maybe it's because Ross, uh, well, you know, in that area that there was radar set up, you know, experimental radar in the area. And that might have taken out the UFO and caused it to crash. Who knows? But I do feel there's something there. Oh, I definitely. And, you know, I believe there was, I, if I'm not correct, I think I've heard information that there was a couple um downcraft there but only one of them got nor- notoriety well yeah, yeah there's there's been downcraft everywhere from south africa to you name it you know that for some reason that supposedly the u.s uh, <clears throat> came and got the craft and recovered it even in south africa i remember that going back in the i say early 90s right right and you know you know another little tidbit of a fact here um, within a week or so, wasn't it um, Mr. Arnold seeing, uh, he coined the phrase flying saucers from seeing craft in Washington State, and then wasn't just like a week or so after when there was the crash in Roswell? Well, there was the first sighting in Washington State, I think it was right after World War II, 45 or something like that, uh, around Mount Rainier or something, that a, a pilot spotted a UFO. Uh, Kenneth Arnold, but I'm pretty sure it was in 47, but it might have been. Oh, I said, well, I said after, I said after World War II. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, and there's just a lot of, I think there's a lot of disinformation that, that uh, Area 51 and the government put out there to distract and, and, and de, you know, make people confused about what's really going on. Well, they don't want the people to know that it's a secure base. It's one of the most secure base in the whole world. And that's why when Heather Wade, a year and a half ago, uh, before she quit her show, and then she's back on now. But she, uh, at one point when Art was alive, uh, I remember Art saying that he was going to support her, but he didn't want to. Uh, that she was going to storm Area 51, and she wanted her listeners to storm Area 51. And she was trying to get a whole bunch of her listeners to go on to Area 51. She even said she didn't care if she got shot. She wanted to prove that UFOs are on Area 51. I'm going to tell you right now, okay, this thing, the storm Area 51 right now, the, the, the FBI, the CIA, the, the, the Air Force, believe me, they're, they're prepared for you if you do. But, you know, it, it started out as somebody getting everybody worked up. And it was a kind of a financial thing. He's, he has a business there and he's trying to get people in there. But if you get people, you don't know what type of people you're dealing with over the radio. Seriously. So if you're sitting there saying, well, let's storm Area 51, you're going to get some people out there. You know what? It probably would do it. And I'm telling you right now, if you storm and go on Area 51, you're going to be like that guy two and a half months ago. You're going to go into Area 51, and you're going to go out in a body bag. Yeah, you know, that, that night that that happened, me and you were, um, we were doing a radio show, and right in the middle of it, that news came across. And that was, that goes to show you, they, they can do whatever they need to do to protect their base. And think about it, if you're storming a base, that's an act of treason. I mean, come on. That, that's ludicrous. Well, they have all the right to use legal force, okay? It's even posted everywhere. 
But if you go on that base, you know, you're going to, and if you don't have credentials to be on that base, you're good as dead. I mean, if it's a whole bunch, maybe some will be lucky and they'll get arrested, but then they're going to get felonies behind them on them, you know, cause that's, that's, you storm a military, that's a federal offense, but, and I don't know if it's treason, but I know it's a federal offense and you're going to, you're going to ruin your, your life for the rest of it. Exactly. And I, I was reading that the, one of the colonels there said that, um, they're ready. They're ready. And I got to tell you, there's, our government's got weapons we don't know about. I do know about one. It's, it's it works with sound. They can point it at, at a crowd of people and turn it on, and, and you're dead in your tracks. And you can't. I mean, it's it's stifling. Well, I do know this. Okay, there are certain government agencies can park in front of your house, right? And all they have to do is point this device at you, and you keel over dead with a heart attack. Oh wow! Okay, so I didn't know. oh yeah, and. and what, and that I know for a fact because of somebody I've had on the show that uh, worked for the government and explained all that stuff to me. But I'm more concerned about this Area 51 thing. You don't want to go on the base. Simple as that. Years ago, I made the mistake, and I had a, one or two of my sons, I can't remember. We went up to see Art because Art was a friend of mine. And, uh, you know, we were killing time because I think Art wasn't home at the time. So we were out. This, we wanted to go see Area 51. You know, and some guy gave us directions, but he said, don't go past the mailbox. I didn't think anything of it, really, seriously. You know, here's this road, right? And there's a mailbox. And I hey, the road continues on. It's a dirt road, you know. I mean, <laughs> and I went in maybe a, a quarter of a mile. And it kind of was like on a side of a hill that the, the road was. And all I know is I saw this van coming the opposite direction really fast. And I remember I had, I can't remember if I turned, I think I had to back out fast as I could. And then I got back on the main road and then I, I, I hit the you know pedal to the metal and I was gone. But I, you know, it tells you, you go on there, they're, they're not going to let you be on the property. I just wanted to go a ways because I heard rumors if you went on this road a little ways, you could get a picture of Area 51, and that's what I was going to do. Yeah, listen, they've got so many ground sensors, um, cameras, and other devices we don't even know about. They know when you're close and when you're on and where you're at at all times there. They, they've got eyes on you, one wrong move, and, and you're done. Well, one of the, the sensors they use is your ammonia from your skin. I didn't know that we, you know, dump off that much ammonia that a, a sensor could pick up that. But evidently, they got really sophisticated equipment. So, yeah, they don't want people there. They don't. Now, I don't know if Area 51 is the main uh, base now for UFOs or if it's down the road a ways on another, you know, area in that area. Uh, it might have been shifted over because of all the talk. But you know what's really bad is, again, you know, uh, if you try Googling it, on Google the maps, and, and you won't get it because it's a secure place. I mean, if, if it, uh, but the thing is, like I said, one of the astronauts from Skylab accidentally took a picture of Area 51, and somehow it got downloaded or it got seen for a little while. And that, you know, probably was not very happy with the uh, Air Force and the CIA, and who knows what other government agencies are working out of Area 51. Exactly. And, you know, there's, they can know what you're talking about. They, you know, they don't know what you're thinking about, but they can pretty much can figure out what you're thinking about doing it just by monitoring you, getting close to there. So, you know, it, it's a it's a lose-lose to try to rush that place. I, I would recommend not doing it. Well, for all the people who, you know, while Facebook was allowing it up on Facebook, if anybody posted, you know, like the people were posting, you know, we're going to storm Area 51 and they wanted people's feedback. I'm just wondering how secure you were if you said, hey, I'm going to, you know, you answer, you know, on Facebook. Hey, I'm going to be there. I'm going to I'm going to, you know, storm Area 51. Well, you're giving everything away. I mean, the government knows exactly where your IP address is right down to you. Well, if it's in your bedroom or in your kitchen. Uh, exactly. And, you know, they had that thing that. They passed uh, just a few years ago where they can monitor your calls and all that stuff. I guarantee anybody that liked that or said they're going to be there, they've done got you on a list somewhere. 
Oh, they sure. don't they don't have you on a list somewhere. They do have you on a list. And yeah. You know, yeah. And then if you happen to be one of those people that do storm area fifty one, I don't know. Is it worth taking a chance to step on what is it gonna solve? You think if you step on Area 51 and demand, show me the uh, dead aliens, that some <sighs> Air Force colonel or general is going to take you by the hand and take you underground and show you something? You're going to be introduced to some M50s or some flamethrowers real quick is what you're going to get introduced to. And honestly, I don't think that there's any more of that kind of stuff going on Area 51 for years because I think... Once they ex- had to expose, admitting that it's there and, and allowing satellites to film, and I think they've done move that stuff all out of there to another area. Well, I they, think now they, they just do some testing there and stuff. I think maybe Area 52, but they still do testing on secret airplanes. You know, these, these fighters and all this stuff, they are so far advanced that we don't even know what they are, and they are still being tested there and, uh, and experimented on there. So, I mean, again, you're going on to a government secure base. We don't know, seriously, what's underground in Area 51. That's, that's true. And, that, and I did have somebody, I did an interview saying that they were uh, 300 years in advance of what we even know. Even if that's only a third of the way true, 100 years in advance, that's something to ponder right there. So that means... If they're that advanced in technology, that means they can use that technology against a crowd of people of something you don't want to meet. Oh, yeah. So you said you had some stories about Area 51. Well? (laughs) Well, we pretty much covered most of them. However, uh, the one thing... uh, um, the Janet flights, they they pick up the employees, supposedly, from Vegas and fly them in. And I, I don't know, I'm pretty sure that's got to be some kind of secure system to have your employees come in and out of there. That's something to think about right there. Just, just having their own flights bringing the employees in. Yeah. Well, somebody say, just sent me a message and said they sound like you're in a, uh, uh, a uh, uh, well, in a reverb, and you sound normal to me. Oh, <laughs> I can't hear myself, but I hope I'm okay. Mike seems, Mike seems to be working okay. Yeah, I'm going to adjust something to see if that helped, but uh, I don't know. It makes me wonder what's, you know, going on at Area 51. I got a funny feeling, you know. I still remember back years ago when Fox showed that, well, fake uh, video uh, or movie clip, supposedly, of them doing, a, a, you know, a topsy of, of an alien. Do you remember that? Absolutely. I remember when it premiered, I watched it. Now... Of course, I think it was a hoax, a guy admitted or something, but um, you, I don't doubt that happened, but I don't think it happened the way they filmed it and all, but because um, think about it, I don't think, I think they would be in full body everything because who knows, their blood could be toxic to us, just the smell of it or, or to, to be around it could kill us, we don't know, and who knows what kind of pathogens they may have on their bodies that would, could wipe out the human race. Oh, yeah. I mean... I mean, these are things to, to ponder when you're messing with that kind of stuff. Now, I have heard, you, you spoke of ammonia, uh, where a couple of aliens have been shot, and they, they uh, reeked of ammonia really bad once they were shot. Now, I don't know if that's, you know, their biological fluids or what it is, but these are things you got to ponder when, when you're doing an autopsy. And that film, it just didn't, I don't know, it didn't look, it didn't look real, but I don't doubt that that really happened. Yeah. I'm just curious, have you done anything different to your microphone? Because even Karen came on and it says, I hear him, but it's like you're in a metal room. So there must be like a little echo or anything. Hmm. Have you played around with that mic gain or anything, done anything different on that uh, microphone? I have not touched the mic one bit, had not at all. Um, I haven't touched anything. I can try to adjust it a little bit, but how I sound now. Now you sound about the same. I, I wouldn't adjust it anymore because then we might have more of a problem than we have. Interesting. Yeah, that is inter- interesting. Maybe somebody else is listening in. Well, maybe because we're talking about Area 51. That could be because the weird part is I haven't touched anything on the uh, computer or my mic, either one. Yeah, well, I haven't touched anything on here, and I certainly don't have uh, any reverb coming out. I, 
If anybody's out there listening, how's my voice coming out out of curiosity? 